Hello girls, I hope you're having a great day and you're staying safe at home. Now in chemistry, today I'm going to start a new chapter that is water. Okay, now you know the formula of water is H2O. That is, it is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So the chemical name of water is dihydrogen. Di means two oxide okay and you know how to find the molecular mass the atomic weight of hydrogen is one it is made up of two atoms plus the atomic weight of oxygen is 16 and there is only one so that is equal to 2 plus 16 will give you 18 amu okay now you know water is the most important natural source and about more than 70% of the earth's surface is covered with water but out of this hardly 2.5% is fresh water. When we talk about fresh water we include the frozen water in polar ice caps and glaciers as well. And you know that water exists in all three states as a solid which is known as ice, as liquid which is known as water and as a gas which is known as water vapor and you know this interchange keeps taking place on the surface of the earth ice and water will be evaporated by the sun's rays it turns into water vapor and again it comes down as rain and this you know is known as the water cycle. Now, water is the main constituent of all living things, be it plants, animals and human beings and even the atmospheric environment in which we live. About 70% of our body weight is water and you will see water in both free state as ice, as water itself, as water vapor and even in the combined state. Now at normal temperature water is seen as a liquid. Now and when you heat this liquid under normal pressure, I hope children you know what is the normal pressure that is one atmosphere and when you measure it in a barometer it will show you 760 millimeter of mercury. So this is the normal pressure you know that water boils at 100 degree celsius and it turns into steam okay now when steam turns back into water now uh, you know the boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius supposing you take a container with water and you heat it it will start boiling at 100 degree Celsius. Supposing we are to evaporate all the water present in this container, you will have to keep on supplying the heat, maybe say for 2 hours. Within the 2 hours, will the boiling point be same or will it be different? It will be the same, 100 degree Celsius. But where is this heat going? What is the heat doing? It is helping the water molecules to ch change into gas, that is into water vapor. So this heat is hidden somewhere. Okay, so hidden heat in chemistry is known as latent heat. Okay, so here when we are heating and the water is boiling, heat is taken up to change the water into its gaseous form that is water vapor and that heat is hidden. So this hidden heat is known as latent heat of vaporization. That is to vaporize, to turn into vapor. There is certain hidden heat required. Now supposing the steam is to change back into liquid, that is water. What must be removed from the steam? 
the hidden heat must be removed isn't it if the hidden heat is removed then the steam will turn into liquid so this hidden heat which is removed is known as it is hidden so it is latent heat of condensation why condensation because the vapor is condensing back into water so you know uh, during uh, rainy season it is the sudden release of this latent heat of condensation that causes stormy weather okay that is thunder lightning okay there is a windy it is very windy so this violence is associated with the rain that comes down so now let us discuss the physical properties of water okay now you know all of you have seen water so pure water is clear it is transparent liquid it does not have any color it is colorless it does not have any smell it is odorless and it does not have any taste it is tasteless now sometimes you may say you drink water and you say this is very sweet water or it has a nice taste it is due to the gases and solids which is dissolved in it that is the impurities which is present in the water now we already talked about the boiling point and the normal pressure that is one atmosphere in the barometer it reads 760 millimeter of mercury pure water boils at 100 degree celsius the boiling point of water is affected by pressure because boiling point of a liquid is considered as a temperature when vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure that is the vapor pressure of the water vapor and the atmospheric pressure becomes equal that is why it is going out into the atmosphere as water vapor so the greater the pressure the higher is the boiling point and lesser the pressure less is the boiling point vice versa means that so this is the principle by which a pressure cooker works that is inside a pressure cooker there is more pressure and what happens water boils at a higher temperature that is higher than 100 degree celsius that is why food also cooks faster because it is getting more temperature okay now in the hills what happens water boils at a temperature which is less than 100 degrees celsius because the atmospheric pressure is less as you as the altitude increases as you go higher up from the plains what happens to the pressure it becomes less okay so at the top of mount everest the boiling point of water is 70 degree celsius so food is not cooked properly there because the temperature is less boiling point is less so pressure cookers are useful in the hills okay the boiling point of water also increases due to presence of dissolved impurities in it if water has some impurities dissolved in it some gases or liquid that time what happens to the boiling point it increases now next moving on to the freezing point of water or melting point of ice you know that pure water freezes at zero degree celsius and the normal pressure 760 millimeter of hg or one atmosphere as i already told you the freezing point of water decreases with increase in pressure so if you increase the pressure the freezing point of water decreases that means it will go below zero degree celsius okay the freezing point of water also decreases due to the presence of dissolved impurities in it okay now when we talk about the density we are talking about the number of uh, molecules of water in a certain area so remember we take the temperature at four degree celsius water has maximum density so what is the density one gram per centimeter cube or thousand kg per meter cube that is if we take a volume of one centimeter take your ruler and draw maybe this much one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter make a cube out of this so this much volume if you measure the water you will find that it is one gram or if you take it one meter if you make a bigger cube one meter by one meter by one meter you will find 1000 kg of water accommodated in that much space okay 
so um, and the volume is the least at 4 degree celsius okay and water expands on freezing it becomes bigger that is 92 volumes of water becomes 100 volumes of ice so you can see water is expanding on freezing so with relative density of ice being 0 0.92 it floats on water because the density or the relative density of ice becomes less than that of water because what is the density here i already told you one gram per centimeter cube and ice it is 0 0.92 so it is lighter than water water is one ice is 0 0.92 so therefore ice will float on water okay now next we will learn about anomalous expansion of water okay Water has a very unusual physical property. It shows a very strange behavior. Now you know, you have learned, when you heat a substance, substance, it expands. And when you cool it, it contracts. Right? So, when cool, it contracts as usual in volume, as other liquids do. Okay, now supposing we are cooling water, say from uh, 10 degree Celsius. Okay, now we come down to 9 degree Celsius. It is contracts. Okay, that means it comes, if this was the volume, it becomes lesser. Okay, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Okay. So it becomes lesser volume. It is contracting. It is becoming lesser and lesser. Now, 3.9 degrees Celsius. And suddenly you will see it starts expanding. It is a very, very strange phenomenon. Okay. No one has been able to explain this. So below 4 degrees Celsius, it starts expanding and continues to do so till the temperature reaches 0 degree Celsius. So 3.9, then 2, it becomes, the volume increases, it increases, so it starts expanding. So the point at which um, it freezes into ice is 0 degree Celsius, so it keeps expanding. That is why volume, I told you here, 92 volumes becomes 100 volumes because it is expanding beyond, below 4 degree Celsius, okay? So the property of anomalous expansion of water enables marine life to exist in the colder region of the world. Because even when the water freezes on the surface, it remains a liquid below the ice layer. Now what happens is the surface of the water comes in contact with air. Okay, so it starts contracting. When it contracts, the molecules come close together. So, it becomes heavier. So, it will drop down. And this one will come up. So, there is a continuous cycle. Again, it will go down. It will come up. So, the water molecules which is below here, which has contracted, always remains at 4 degree Celsius. And then finally, on the surface... It will turn to 0 degree Celsius and then it will turn into ice. And ice, you know, does not allow the air to go in or come out. So the water below the ice will remain water. It will not turn into ice. As a result, the aquatic plants and animals which is below the ice can live even in the winter season. I hope it is clear. Now next we come to latent heat of fusion of ice. The latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat required to change a substance from solid state to its liquid state at its melting point without any change in temperature. Now supposing ice is to be melted into water. It will melt at 0 degree Celsius. So until and unless the entire ice has melted, 
the temperature will remain the same. Why? Because it is the melting point. So again, that time remember I explained the latent heat, the hidden heat. So you keep on heating this ice, but the heat will just disappear. Why? Because it is helping the ice to melt into water. Okay, so the temperature will remain the same. So that is the latent heat of fusion of ice. So the amount of heat energy required by ice to change into water is called latent heat of fusion of ice. What is the value? It is 336 joules per gram. This much heat is taken up, latent heat, or 80 calories per gram. Children, this is very important. You have to learn it. Just like you know, uh, boiling, uh, boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius, melting point is 0 degrees Celsius. So you must know the latent heat of fusion of ice is 336 joules per gram or 80 calories per gram. And you must also know that at 4 degrees Celsius, the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube or 1000 kg per meter cube. You have to know this by heart. So uh, the same amount of heat is released. What is the same amount? That is 336 joules per gram or 80 calorie per gram of water is released when 1 gram of water turns into ice to form 1 gram of ice at 0 degree Celsius. Once the latent heat is removed, then it will turn into ice. When that latent heat is given, the ice will turn back into water. Okay, so it is on account of high specific latent heat of solidification that lakes and rivers do not freeze suddenly. So you may get a question, why don't lakes and rivers freeze suddenly? You must say it is because of the high specific latent heat of solidification because it takes a lot of time to give away that much heat. Okay, so next we move on to latent heat of vaporization of water. I think I had already explained that previously. Now you know when water is boiled, it changes to gaseous state, that is water vapor. Now the energy required or the heat required to change water into its vapor at boiling point, that is 100 degrees Celsius, without any change in temperature. That means the boiling point will remain the same, that is 100 degrees Celsius only. So that Hidden heat is known as latent heat of vaporization of water and what is the value? 2,268 joules per gram or 540 calories per gram. So that is why our body sweats during hot weather. Evaporation of sweat takes heat from the body, thus it cools our body. Now the same amount of uh, heat is released when one gram of steam condenses to form one gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius. That means the latent heat was required to turn water into steam. That latent heat must be released or given out to change steam into water. Okay, so it is a count on the high specific latent heat of condensation. That steam causes far more serious burns than boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius. That is, you will burn more severely with steam or with water vapor that is with which is coming out from boiling water why because boiling the steam that comes out from boiling water has is at 100 degrees celsius plus it has 2268 joules per gram of latent heat so the burn is more severe than if you burn yourself with just boiling water okay so it is the sudden release of latent heat of condensation that causes the violence associated with torrential rain. I think I had already explained it previously. Okay, now next we come to specific heat capacity. It has been found that one gram of water when you heat through one degree Celsius always absorbs 4.2 joule or one calorie of heat energy that is supposing water is at 20 degree celsius and you want to heat and you heat it to 21 degree celsius so the water to turn from 20 degree celsius to 21 degree celsius it requires 4.2 joules or one calorie of heat energy and we are talking about one gram of water Okay, so the fixed amount of heat absorbed by one gram of water when heated through 
one degree celsius it's called its specific heat capacity this is the definition of specific heat capacity now water because of its high specific heat is used as a coolant in motor car radiators in the engines of car, uh, cars i think sometimes you have seen no when um, vehicles or cars are coming uphill they put lots of water in the engine why because water can absorb a lot of heat that is 4.2 joules one gram of water absorbs 4.2 joules of heat so imagine how much uh, one liter or 10 liters of water can absorb okay so it is also used in coolers so due to its high specific heat capacity the presence of large amount of water is able to modify the climate of nearby land areas that is uh, supposing near a huge lake or a pond or near the seashore okay it is cooler why and during the winter it is warmer it makes them warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer okay land breeze and sea breezes are also set up because of this great moderating property of water uh, children please listen carefully you have to do an assignment and submit it to me on 17th july that is friday at 1 pm okay and you will submit this assignment in my personal whatsapp number please do not post it in the group and uh, write your names before you submit your assignment and uh, if you have any questions regarding the assignment please ask me in my personal number do not post anything in the group regarding the assignment and uh, the assignment that you have to do is to write down all the physical properties of water and define each physical property oh, so children will stop here today we'll continue in the next class or the next upload till then stay safe god bless you